And I also want to remind you, dear Mr. Bishop, that the Catholic Church always says that they are pro-life. And life is not just the business of being born and dying. Life is everything that's in between. And life is the air that you breathe. Life is the water that you drink. Life is the hope that you give to your people. And let me also remind you that all this pollution causes um, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, abortions in women. And you are so adamant against abortion. What is the difference between a woman that you know, consciously wants an abortion and a woman that you know, spontaneously aborts her kid because she is breathing all these toxic fumes? To me, there is no difference. So if you condemn one, you also have to condemn whoever is polluting the atmosphere and causing all these birth defects and damages to fetuses. So, <laughs> I, was just, so I thought that you know, they were just going to let it go and that I just had all my anger come out. But one of these bishops emails me back. And he's like, dear Maria, I read your email very carefully this morning. And in fact, I decided uh, not to do my usual round of prayers, but I meditated on your email. I was like, okay. And he's like, and I agree with you, and I promise you that you will be in my prayers, and I will pray for this oil center not to be built. And I said, oh, God, okay. So I responded, said, okay, very good. Praying is wonderful, but we need to do something, you know, <laughs> concrete here. Uh, but again, it opened a dialogue between us. And I said, okay, let's do something. I will come back in September, whatever it was, and uh, um, whenever you, you know, and we will sort of, you know, draft some document together if that's okay with you. And he said, okay. And I guess that, again, as we were saying earlier, even bishops must have some kind of internal competition because once I've convinced one, all of them decided to sign up. And so in September, and this was Earth, you know, the, the, the day that the Catholic Church reserves for, you know, Earth you know, Protection Day was September 1st, 2008. They came out with a document, all of them, where again, they condemned the oil and gas operations. And that was actually a very big uh, thing because um, I didn't know it at the time, but one of these bishops actually was the personal consultant to Pope John Paul II on theological matters. So it was a big shot in the Catholic Church, so much so that this made the national news. It's right here. The the uh, theologo means theologian of the Pope at war with Amy, okay? So that made it really big, okay? And, uh, and then again, we tried to do several things over the course of many months. So this was the time of Proposition 8 in California. And I remember walking around, you know, Los Angeles, and there were all these signs that said, you know, I forget if it was yes or no, but, you know, vote against the ban on, on you know, gay marriage, do this, do that, and all these little signs. And I thought, well, we should do the same thing. So I contacted the head of the Chamber of Commerce and I said, let's make little ads that everybody can put in their storefronts. And they did it. They printed this for free and they gave it to all the people who wanted them and they put them on the storefronts of their you know, little shops. And then the BBC came to make a story on this. Al Gore's television came. So you know, it was quite a big, uh, uh, a big stir. And, right, and we did many things. Uh, I went to talk to schools. At some point, me and Mr. Bishop got some prize. We had marches. And one of the things that um, really you know, you know, was you know, um, useful, and I think we don't you know, pay too much attention about that here because we're so used to it, but it was Proposition 65 of California. And I, I, you know, I disseminated this, and I said, look, this is what they do in California. There's a law that, that all the oil companies here have got to sign where they will tell you that chemicals known to the state to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm are contained in you know, crude oil and all oil-related operations. So if this is what they're saying to the California people, it also applies to us. So do not believe them when they tell you this is not polluting. Actually, it is, because again, they are signing this themselves. And if the Italian company wants to you know, do these kinds of things in California, they would also have to sign all this. And I think that, you know, again, we should use this a little bit more here, too. When they say that this is not going to cause you know, any health problems, look, there is, they, they themselves, this is signed by you know, Exxon, BP, Shell, et cetera. So they themselves are saying that this is going to give you cancer. So there is no way around that. Uh, then again, they, they, they came out with all sorts of things. So they, they thought that they could buy ads in the newspapers and you know, just again, this is a long list of benefits that you're gonna get from oil and gas drilling. So you know, job creation, uh, uh, the price of oil will go down, we're gonna be independent. Uh, um, um, you know, we, it, doesn't, it doesn't really do anything to uh, agriculture, everything is fine. And so I, when, we, when that came out, I decided, okay, we're gonna respond line by line. 
And actually, I wrote this, and you know, we, pull, we put in, everybody put in some money, and we actually bought another page of the paper after a couple of weeks. And by that, th that time, this had become such a big uh, uh, thing politically that uh, no politician, when I actually I called all of them, all the mayors of these little towns, none of them uh, could say no. So they all told me that they could add their logo, of the, ci the city logo, to the paper. And this was signed by the different provinces of the area, the winemaking people, uh, uh, the union of, you know, a beach, um, the beach, you know, people that, you know, work, uh, that, that own beach facilities. Uh, so, you know, we, again, responded to everything that they were trying to do. And finally, uh, um, right, uh, uh, because that governor had been arrested, now we have to go through special elections. So in the meantime, right, so they decided that because there was going to be elections, nobody wanted, uh, politically, nobody wanted to take any decisions on this oil f facility. So they decided, again, to extend the moratorium for another year. In the meantime, Berlusconi, who was prime minister at the time, he comes to campaign uh, for his own you know, uh, candidate. And again, it became such a big issue, this thing of the oil, that he had to say something about it. And because everybody was against it, he actually, he, uh, he was a short guy, so he took a ladder and he climbed on top of it. <laughs> and uh, he actually proclaimed that the oil center was not going to be built. So that was a little bit of success. And at the time, you know, all the, all the, uh, the, the, the people who wanted to be, uh, you know, who were running for the seat, they all sort of wanted my, you know, in some sense, my endorsement, including the one that later, vote, that later won, this guy called Johnny Kiddy. So he wrote me a letter saying, you know, oh, I'm totally going to be against oil and blah, blah, blah. So he was actually the one who actually won the election. Uh, finally, in May 2009, they uh, announced that they had given up on developing this refinery because of, again, the bishops took a stance, the people were clearly against it, and also they said the oil prices were declining, so it wasn't, making, it, it wasn't gonna make economic sense for themselves. Uh, at this time, this, le this project is on indefinite hold, meaning that the oil company still owns the leases and the land it bought, not all of the land, but you know, whatever they bought, they still own. But again, right now there are no plans, at least at the moment, for them to keep uh, developing this land. Uh, finally, again, I thought that you know this wasn't enough because um, right we can stop one, but we can I cannot repeat this every every other year. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I really tried to do everything that I could to put pressure so that there was some kind of law that would prohibit this from happening in the future. So again, because of pressure, not just from me, but at this point by you know everybody who was involved in this, they actually did pass a law which forbids oil extractions in the entire region. And this was passed in 2010. However, there are a lot of loopholes in this, in this law. And uh, um, because it, it, most importantly, it does not mention natural gas. So if you wanted to drill, you could always say, well, we're going to drill for natural gas. And what do you know? We found oil. So that is something that you know, needs a little bit of fixing. But you know, it's going to take a little bit more time. Um, there is, um, right, so this is the end of this first part, maybe we'll stop here. So the, the old gentleman who did not sell his land to the oil company, he died in 2011. The land is still, in the, the, his family still owns it. The mayor's term ended in 2012, in 2012 and uh, his political career is over because, you know, nobody likes him anymore, but his business is still going. Um, the vice mayor is, is now leads the, the tourism borough of that area. Uh, uh, he was appointed not because he got voted, but because of you know personal favors. The governor was sentenced to nine and a half years in prison. Um, and at this point, uh, again, it became such a hot topic that all politicians of all colors, all you know stripes, they have all publicly stated that they oppose drilling in this region. So um, we'll stop. The, the story continues, but we'll just stop here.